when your EOD goes bad, it'll go down and won't go back up. That's when your EOD goes bad. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is an update to the eighth generation Honda Civic with ELD electronic load detector issues. This also works for seventh gen, though their ELD and fuse panel that's underneath the hood is in a different location. You still have an ELD and by changing out the ELD you will see significant improvement in your charging system but there are some things some details here that I want to share with you so as you know if you saw one of my previous videos done probably about a week ago or just a few videos under this one on the list um, I replaced the ELD that is under the hood of this 8th gen Honda Civic. Now the ELD that's on the 8th gen Honda Civic is underneath this fuse panel. You have to remove the airbox cover, remove the computer, and the battery. That way you can get this and get it on its side just enough to where you can get the little plugs and unplug them and take out the entire panel. Then once you have the entire panel pulled apart, inside here, the box. So now that we're back inside the vehicle and I have explained to you how the EOD is accessed on the fuse panel underneath the hood, next I want to explain to you what exactly this is. This is just a very generic Chinese version of a um, reader that reads out your parameters. This wire right here plugs straight into your OBD2 port. If you have an OBD2 port, this will work for you. Um, this one and any other one that reads out your parameters. It's very simple to install. If you want to observe your parameters as you drive, you're more than welcome to get one of these. They're 40, I wouldn't spend no more than $40. That's what I spent on this one. I didn't need the speedometer. I didn't need the RPM. I have that already, but you really can't, well you can, I just hadn't found one that I liked that had the temperatures and the voltage in there. So this is basically a unit that tells you all your parameters. Parameters being temperature, engine temperature, oil temperature, voltage, and let's go through some of the other settings as well. So you have this left button controls the top the right button controls the middle and the voltage stays there it does not change you cannot change this section but you can see all the parameters through the first two so I want to move the left one or tap the left one and you're gonna see right now I have it on engine coolant temperature now rpm now fuel now map sensor oil temperature um not sure what af is it does come with a manual it'll tell you i'm trying to explain these as best i can tcp I'm not sure psi that's that's for boost if you have a turbo don't know what km slash l is cvt i'm thinking that's a transmission eld Maybe that's electronic load detector. I don't know. But I'm not using those settings. TPS, minutes, DIS, voltage, GPS, ASL, DIR, ECT. So these are the, these are the two settings I like to watch on my vehicle. ECT, like, um, engine coolant temperature, OIT, oil temperature, 
and VLT voltage. There's two main parameters you must watch on pretty much every car, but more importantly on the Civic is your temperature and your voltage. Okay. So right now I have a 170 degree thermostat. I was testing it. I don't like it because it's so hot here. It stays open. It's like not running a thermostat. So I'm switching it out tonight to a 180. And that's going to change my problems. Not that I had a lot of problems. It's, I do a lot of highway driving, so it doesn't get hot. The hottest it gets from my one-hour commute is about 181, 182. But I notice that it stays open. And I notice that because I'm watching the temperature. The oil temperature on these cars, on this car in particular, will always stay 5 to 6 degrees cooler than the coolant. That's something cool to note. Now, the voltage. This is what the main reason of this video is for. Right now, sitting while we're off is 12.3. Put it in neutral, let me start it. Now you can see it's about 13.5. Um, I had my voltmeter hooked up to the battery to see if this was accurate. This is low to about 0.1 to 0.2, lower than my voltmeter. So this is a little bit off. So there you can see I started up and I'm monitoring my voltage. Now you're asking me, why doesn't it say 14, 14.1? That's a very good question. Because as we know, as it's running, a vehicle should be 14, 14.1 to 14.3, something like that, right? Well, not Honda. Honda says, you're good enough with 13.7, 13.9, maybe 14, I'll determine that. And now that I put a new ELD, I'm finding out that the parameters for the voltage is dictated by the computer because the ELD is new. I bought it from hondadirect.com or whatever. It's a brand new Honda part. There is no aftermarket for an ELD that I know of. So it would be nice if now that I put in a new ELD, it would stay charging at 14.2 and that would have fixed it. But it fixed it, just not the way I wanted it to fix. So now the computer says, okay, your ELD works. Now I have parameters in which I will charge your battery based on load. So if you put a new ELD and you pull up to a stop sign and it says this with your engine running 12.4 that's going to be normal it doesn't make sense but it's going to be normal what isn't normal is when you get up to speed you're doing about 50 55 no lights on no fan on no nothing and you're pushing 65 you know you're going you can tell you know i'm moving the vehicle to high rate of speed there should be a load being drawn and that's true and then this will jump up to about 13.7 maybe 14. And that's all fine and dandy. That's controlled by the computer. So there's really no way around it unless you put the 820 ohm resistor and you back probe it into the ELD somehow. I haven't gotten into all that crazy stuff. I don't think I will. I don't want to. As long as I'm monitoring that, I'm okay. It's a $40 fix. It's fast. It's easy versus cracking into that thing again. The fuse panel. So your job to maintain the voltage is basically to to know what it is and it's to either get one of these or if you don't want to get one of these you can get one of those cigarette lighter plugs that charges your phone and it'll say the number in digital i have one on my toyota fj and it always says 14 one and you can have one and plug it in right there and just watch it and you'll see it go down and up and down and up when your eld goes bad it'll go down and won't go back up that's when your ELD goes bad. As you can see, I got 199,293 miles in this thing. You can redline it. This motor sounds so crisp and clean and perfect. It's, man, I've done, I've changed every fluid known to man in this vehicle when I bought it just about, oh, let's see. I bought it trip A 
trip B. I bought it 2,091 miles ago. So if that answers your questions, if you have any questions about this, please feel free to ask me in the comments. I usually answer them within the day, if not right then and there, if I'm not working. Now here's some friendly tips and friendly hints if you want to keep it at about 13.7 to 14 all the time. So this is what I do. I have LED headlights. They're all LED. They draw nearly no pull off the battery. So just to let you know, at night with no AC running, I'll have the headlights on and I'll go here to the fan and click it one time. After I do that, then when, I, when I'm like coming to a stop sign or whatever, instead of saying 12-2, it'll say 13-7-14. Okay? That's one way to keep it up. Your rear defroster, if you don't mind burning up your window tent in the back, that draws a lot of electricity. Believe it or not, it really does. Having that on. And, let's see, at night... Um, or if you're in the daytime with just the air conditioner, you have the AC light on and the compressor's working, it's kicking those fans on, that will make a draw, a good enough draw to, to tell this, hey, turn on. Those are all things that will keep your battery charged up, whether your ELD is working or not. It's kind of a shitty deal. You want to see it at 14 and be happy and just forget about it. But as I drive, I like having this gauge here and I can see, I look at it, Man, in a 60 mile trip, I'll probably look at it every mile. Just peek at it every now and then. Just make sure my parameters are right, my engine's not overheating, my block's not gonna crack. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? And if y'all say anything about these bolts, I really don't care. I could not find, this thing was awesome, but it came with this, this glue, glue um, double-sided tape. It wouldn't stick to anything. I don't like pouring uh, super glue on my dash and stuff so I just took two bolts and drilled them into the dash because this is my 200,000 mile beater eh, semi beater I do take care of it I do like this vehicle I want it to last but it's uh it is what it is all right y'all take it easy we'll see y'all in the next one